Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Welcome to the Potter's Roundtable, a monthly podcast where we share our passion for the ceramic arts and a collection of topics specific to potters. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Phil Bernberg. Today's topic is tiny details in glazes, a close-up view of a glaze. If a glaze is just a coating of glass, then how can glazes look so different? I mean, there are not, there's not an unlimited variety of actual compositions. Well, the answer is, obviously different colors make the glazes look different, and different thicknesses of the glazes over different clay bodies can make them look different. But there are also a lot of actually fine, almost microscopic structures in the glaze. They're either on the surface of the glaze, or in the glaze layer itself, or actually at the bottom of the glaze layer, between the, where the glaze layer meets the clay. That's known as the interfacial zone or layer, the boundary between the clay and the glaze. And so we have a diagram. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend as if, if this were a thick glazed tile and the glaze is on the top, we're going to slice it in half and look at a cross section of what the glaze would look like on this tile. And that's what this diagram represents. So these are some of the features that if you could look at a glaze under a microscope or with a hand, ma hand magnifier, you could see. So we're looking sort of at a sideways view. So this top point, this top layer here, this represents the glaze layer and I'm calling it the glassy matrix. The matrix is basically what's sort of holding everything else together. That, that is the bulk of the glass. And then down here, we have the clay body. This is the clay body. And then there's a zone where the, where the glaze meets the clay body is called the interfacial zone. That's where the, the glaze has actually reacted with the clay. So it actually has a composition that's sort of a com combination of the glaze and the clay body itself. It's, it's sort of a third zone that's created with the firing. And so if we look, these are some of the features that can exist in a glaze. So first of all, you can get surface cracks that just penetrate partway down into the, into the glaze, but don't go any further. But you'll still see them on the surface of the pot, and if the glaze is transparent, when you look at it, you see them from an angle. So you do see these glazes, they reflect the light. Another feature that you can have are what are called phase-separated glasses. That's the technical term for it. And what it means is, if there's more than one composition of a glass that it doesn't necessarily mix and dissolve in the main glaze. So it acts like little, little floating islands or pools of this other glaze. And an example might be titanium oxide can form a glass, or phosphorus oxide can form a glass, and it may not dissolve completely in the, gla in the, the bulk of the glass. So you have these little sort of watery pools of other, other glasses floating in the main glass. Those are called phase-separated glasses. And so that can, and what they do is they can scatter the light and they're responsible to a great degree to some of the watery appearances. There's a whole family of glazes known as floating blues. And one of the reasons why they have that sort of watery appearance is because of this effect. Another thing you can have is you can have, you can have crystals of opacifier floating in the glaze. The reason why an opacifier works is because they, the, the little crystals of the particles don't dissolve in the glaze. So they're sitting in the glaze, reflecting and scattering the light, and the more you have in the, floating around in the glaze, the more opaque they make the glaze. So they're floating around in the glaze. Then you can have new crystals also. As the glaze cools, sometimes different compositions of glazes actually start to form microscopic crystals that sit on the surface, and these can also be sitting on, they can be sort of bumping the surface, but they can, they can be, so these crystals can form with cooling. And this is, this is very typical of matte glazes. Most true matte glazes are matte if they're, if they're properly fired because of micro, micro crystal formation in the glaze. And the, 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 the crystals sit on the surface and they make the surface slightly rough, very slightly rough, enough to scatter the light and soften the surface texture from shiny to this sort of satiny to matte finish. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And consider becoming a patron of our channel. Visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. 
If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Another thing you can have in the, in the glaze, depending on whether it's fired properly or improperly, is undissolved ingredients. Some of the materials that you put in the glaze to start may not have completely dissolved in the glass. Ideally, when you fire a glaze, you want all of the ingredients, every single last particle, to completely dissolve in the glass so that you end up with just this clear liquid glass at high temperature. But that may not happen, especially if the material, let's say, has some larger particles in it and you didn't allow enough time for them to dissolve. Or you fired, this is one reason, for instance, why you don't necessarily want to rush a glaze firing because you want to allow time for all the ingredients to dissolve. So you could have a variety of different kinds of particles floating around in the glaze and also sitting on the surface that didn't, little chunks that didn't completely dissolve in the glaze. Then you can also have a colorant in suspension. One of the two kinds of colorants that you can have in glazes is a suspension colorant, which means little colored particles that just float around in the glaze. And if you have enough of them in the glaze, that's the color that you see. So you can also have those particles sitting on the surface and just floating around in the glaze. Another feature that you can have, this is a bubble crater on the surface as well as bubbles within the glaze. And these could be bubbles coming from just trapped air in the glaze. They could be coming from materials in the glaze that broke down as the glaze was fired and produced gas and there wasn't enough time for all the gas bubbles to escape from the glaze before it froze. So the bubbles remain trapped in the glaze and they're gonna scatter the light and affect the appearance of the glaze. And finally, you can have deep cracks that can go all the way down through the, the, the difference between these and these is the fact that actually a lot of cracks, even with a lot of crazing, don't just stay within the glaze layer. They actually go all the way down into the clay body and they actually weaken the clay body. And so these wide, they're gonna be a little wider on the top. Again, you can see them from the surface. And if the glaze is transparent, you'll see them from the side. But if the glaze is matte, there's a really good chance you won't see them. A lot of matte glazes have actually have, have cracks in them. You just can't see them because you can't see them from an angle. All you could see is the little opening on the surface. And in a lot of cases, that's very difficult to see. And another feature you can have, so in addition to all of these materials in the glaze and affecting the surface, when the, when, the, when the glaze reacts with the clay, you can also form mullite crystals at the boundary between the glass and the clay. And these are called secondary mullite crystals that actually form. And if the glaze is clear enough, when you look through the glaze, you can actually see these crystals sitting at the bottom of the glaze layer. So the point is, so all of these things can affect the appearance of a glaze. There, so there are a lot of possible, all of these things can contribute to the, the various looks of the glaze. So if we sort of summarize it, in terms of the glass surface, it, the glass surface could be smooth, it could be just absolutely smooth, and there's nothing on the surface. But you could also have crystals, or you could have inclusions or particles sitting on the surface, which change the surface texture. And, they, and they, if they scatter the light, then again, this is where they change it from this smooth glassy looking surface to either a satiny or, a, or even all the way to a matte, a stone dead matte surface because you have all these little things sitting on the surface. You can have bubble craters sitting on the surface. You can have, I didn't show that here, but you can actually have wrinkles in the surface. If the, if the glaze didn't get very fluid when it melted, then it may not have flattened out completely. So the surface can also be finely wrinkled like this a little bit. And that, again, that scatters the light and makes it look a little different. And finally, you can have cracks. So a lot of things on the surface. In the glaze layer itself, of course, you can have all this stuff going on. Any one or any combination of all of these things happening. And all of them, what in the glaze layer, what these things do is they scatter the light differently. Some cases, they might actually refract the light and create different colors. They might make the glaze more or less opaque or transparent. So, but they, so you've got a tremendous variety of effects here, colorants, that can change the appearance of the glaze. And even down at the bottom of the, the glassy layer, depending on if the glass is clear, there are things going on at the bottom with the interfacial zone. This can change color from the clay body, so you can have something, another color at the bottom that if the glass is clear, when you look through the glass, you see it, okay? And this creates sort of the, the appearance of depth in some glazes. So the point here is that if you look at, if you consider all these, these sort of small features, 
there's actually a lot going on in a glaze that can change the appearance. And even if you had two glazes that were essentially the same, but you fired them differently or you cooled them differently and you created some different conditions, you can make them look different. So this is the reason why you can get such a variety of appearances out of glazes with even that, you know, from a relatively small number of, of, of glaze formulas. So that's it for today. Thank you all, folks. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also, check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable. The Potter's Roundtable is brought to you by Washington Street Studios and our patrons. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and tell your friends. If you want to learn more about Washington Street Studios and shared studio memberships, please visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time on the Potter's Roundtable.